All right, everyone. Unfortunately, I can't quite tell if my internet's working or not because Twitch is having a hard time loading for me. Um, but it OBS says that my internet is really good and I don't have any drop frames, so we're going to run with it. Very much apologize if I have any internet issues, but as you all know, my internet is not the best, so it is what it is. So, uh, we are back with Honkai Star Rail. The title of this was going to be Yenli's uh, Close-Up, because we were going to do her... Um, oh, I don't think I've ever had Dr. Ratio on here. How great. A space so meticulously curated just for my refined tastes. I suppose it might do for moments of reflection. Perhaps the best part is that even with so many present, there's a delightful scarcity of simpletons. Thank you. Uh, not at all. As a nameless who's always on the road, constantly meeting with various characters, don't these encounters become wearisome? Eh. It's no small feat. The average person is easily swayed by their environment, after all. Go ahead and try. With this mask on, I intend to keep the world at bay. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had Dr. Ratio on the train before. Um, oh, and Argenji's over here, too. We meet again, dear friend. Thank you for the invitation. Please allow me to praise your sincere and compassionate soul. Oh my god. I cannot with that voice. It's just so different from what I'm used to. Looks like we understand each other. Remember that night of hallucinations. In this very familiar car, the ugly giant sting solidified our friendship. <gasps> An act of pure beauty it appears you have been completely converted by the good name of a drill of the beauty i won't waste your dauntless courage and tenaciousness the gates of the knights of beauty are always open to you the feeling of boarding the express and seeing everyone again is simply indescribable my dear friend please allow me to extend my sincere greetings to the express in a way that only a knight can I'm not a fan of that. I'm gonna say that. He doesn't have the soft sojo shoujo voice that he used to have. Now he just sounds like he's trying to sound excited and it's not coming through as authentic. Anyway, um Do you so we're to going enter to the forgotten hall. Um Anyway, so what I was going to show you all is I have actually done much better than normal uh, on the Forgotten Hall. Uh, usually I can reach about seven anyway by getting like a star, but I've never like three starred up to level six. So we're almost like halfway through it for once. Um, have still not tried to get any further in this one. And of course, this one's completed. I should really do that other one later today. Um, I probably, I never really mess around with the relics, but I literally sat down for like two hours and went through all of the relics and all of the like synthesized stuff you can use for relics. And then that's like literally what I did for two hours is I just worked on making sure everybody had relic sets until I ran out of synthesized material, as you can see. Some people don't have full sets in my four stars. I made sure to do all of my five stars, but i um, still working on getting the quote unquote best set um, for each character. Now, some of the characters disagree with me because apparently in the game now, if you like go to a relic, you can see like it all have this little bit of gold in it, right? Um, that shows that it's like a recommended stat for the character you're on. And then if you go to sets, they also have recommended sets for the character. 
Um, and not every character that the equipment I have on them is what they're recommended by the game itself. Because I run off of uh, game eight. If you want any good builds for a character, just go to game eight. Game eight will help you out. Um, so yeah. So I did that for like two hours. And it did help me get further in some of the battles than I used to. So... Uh, I just hate doing relic hunting. Relic hunting is just a nightmare because, good example being, pretty much every single character, not that, relics, uses this set. The Iron Cavalry thing, uh, like, is suggested that they use this set. Um... And, as shown by Misha, right, Misha also needs... I think you have it too. An ice one of these. Ice damage boost. And I were I used up all my synthesis material on this one. Trying to get one that would have the ice damage on it and not a single one. I think I made like over forty or fifty of them. It was a lot because I hadn't used any of the synthesis material up to this point in the game. Um, and so, like, I had a lot built up since this game came out, because I think, like, it's been, like, a year and a half or something since this game came out, or close to a year and a half. Um, so I had a lot built up, and, like, I never got an ice damage one. That's why I hate relic farming in that capacity. Uh, and then because everybody uses it, you then have to go through the ones you have made, and then compare it against everyone. So like all I had to make sure to compare all the wind damage ones for the characters that needed that. And it's a process um, that I usually do not have the patience to do. Uh, so what else have we done? That's why I don't do like a good example is this. Why I don't do this in one sitting. I just don't have the patience to do these each time because... Um, Swarm Disaster itself takes like 40 minutes to an hour to get through one round of it. So. Um, so we tried the, speaking of Swarm Disaster, we tried to do the Propagation Path again. Um, because it's the last path that we need on the 5 star difficulty, or the level 5 difficulty, to complete Swarm Disaster on each of the paths. Uh, we failed. Uh, last time, last week, we had gotten to the second boss battle and we failed. This time we got all the way to the third boss battle um, and we failed. So we're getting closer. And then, uh, of course, we did Divergent Universe. Uh, and we did that for the week. And we're getting pretty close to almost having all of the, all of the background stuff. We're only doing it like once a week. Gallery of possibilities. As you can see, I'm at like 78%. Um, but yeah. Missing around like 15 of those. Just above 20 of those. Five of those. One of those. I think this occurrence is the one that I'm missing the most of. Um, but just like under 30 or so. So we're getting through these. And then, as you can see, we're level 13. Um, and then this is my inspiration circuit. So I just do by row. I don't, I wasn't trying to like get any particular path maxed out first. I just do by like each row. I'll just fill it out fully and then I'll do on to the next one. But I prioritize these big nodes first before doing any of the small ones. Hence why I could technically level up a node currently, but I'm not gonna until I get this one here. But yeah, so this one's fun. I wish since they do have like an animation for this, I wish that they would give an animation to the uh, to Kalis for changing his uh, element. Oh my gosh, I hate these things. Oh my gosh, why is it me? Oh, I hate that even more. I didn't even notice that before. And then Squidlin's here. Anyway, so that's what I've been doing your 10 minute update on what I've been doing in the meantime and then uh, we fully have Jiao Chao done 
And then I have been working on Serval. So we have her at 80, 80, and we are currently doing traces. And as you can see, I almost have her traces done. Like I'm, eh, eh, almost. Uh, and then it's just, I believe, Arland and over. Yeah. Um... I just, once I get Serval done, it'll just be these five. And then we are stuck in eternal, eternal relic hunting. So, okay. Uh, collect all the story endings and marches, imaginary events. Uh... Increase training stats by 300 in a single round. Uh, Reroll a total of 50 times in simulated universe. Storm disaster. And have four characters enter the sleepy safe when battling tomorrow in harmonious, harmonious chords. Which I think I got that from the... Uh, whatever it's called. The monthly fight thing I was showing you all earlier. So I've already got this one, the friendship is magic, and then, um, so this is what we were going to work on, was a uh, Yunli's companion mission. We should pop up right next to it. It's still early. Ever since March started learning swordplay from Yunqing and Yunli, her voice has been absent on the express. I wonder how well she's progressing. Where has she been these days? Have you seen March 7th? She didn't turn up for practice. I was just planning to look for her. Frankly, I haven't seen her around either. Oh. Hmm. If I can't find March 7th, then I can only seek out her legal guardian, which is you. If the kid won't perform, seeking the grown if the kid won't perform, seeking the grown ups out won't do anything either. Besides, when has March ever listened to me? Indeed, Grandpa would usually throw out all the complainers. Ugh, I was ordered to instruct her in the ways of the sword. She can skip this class, but I can't skip my duty. We need to talk about your child's behavior, Kalis. How about this? You come find me at Arm Alley. I'll wait for you. Looking around before you got here, I already looked everywhere, but March 7th is nowhere to be found. <sighs> Forget it. Let's just assume she successfully skipped class. Actually, she's been quite diligent in her swordplay practice and hasn't taken many breaks lately. I think she deserves a day off. Besides, I used to skip classes even more than her back when I was still learning. If I was in the mood, I could train for three days straight. But if I wasn't in the mood, none of my seniors could find me. So, I can understand where she's coming from. Ah, no need. I asked you to come, so I won't send you away empty-handed. Since you're here, let me treat you to some tasty food. I'm more interested in you today. Let's walk and talk. That is that is not walking. Sasha told me there's tasty food in Arum Alley. Let's go there. Tumblings and steam buns. The buns are sweet. A table for two, please. All right, come on in. What would you like? Well, we'll have one of everything on the menu. The entire menu? Hmm. Do you think it'll be enough? Oh, don't worry. There are two of us. 
Yunli looks at you confidently. Well, then I'll start making a few dishes, and if you need more, just let me know. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, not too much, actually. Grandpa said to never be stingy when it comes to making friends. So, how big is your appetite? Uh, it honestly depends, but I'll say bottomless pit. Alright, then eat to your heart's content. You know, I've thought about it. She deserves a day off. Well, to be more precise, I'm interested in your sword. You mean my baseball bat? Yen Ching mentioned you before. He said that you're not to be underestimated, and that your weapon has a unique shape. Uh, yes, my baseball bat. So, I've always been curious about your sword. How the weight is distributed, what material it's made of, whether it contains any special ingenia, and what kind of sword techniques you use. Seriously? A bat? Yeah, now more than ever. You place your beloved bat, your most trusted companion, perhaps second only to the likes of March 7th, Don Hung, Welt, Himiko, and Pom Pom, before Yun Lee's gaze. So, it really is a baseball bat. Grandpa said that a sword doesn't have to be constrained by its shape, so, in a sense, your bat is a sword too. He also said that a weapon mimics its master, so your bat actually reflects your habits and nature, you know? <laughs> Let me guess. You're someone who doesn't follow the rules, enjoys improvising, and can handle yourself well against tough foes. Am I right? <laughs> oh, you're mistaken. I always follow the rules. That's a bold lie, Caleb. You have been arrested on almost every single area we've been to. Amazing, right? And I bet you always say something silly, like, rules are made to be broken. That is my ultimate, yes. I've come across so many sword wielders who acted all righteous and moral, but were really just liars. Their swords always told the truth, though. They told me that their wielders were just a bunch of frauds who relied on their divine weapons for everything. I've hunted down hundreds of swords like this so far. And every single one of them has been melted down. Please don't melt my baseball bat. Yes, but only for those who cross the line. Melting their swords is my way of protecting those weapons. Just looking at a sword is not enough. Grandpa always says, words and expressions can be deceiving, but in a fight to the death, a sword's movements never lie. The war dance is just around the corner. You'll be participating, right? Miss Yun Li, for talented sword masters like you, the war dance is a perfect opportunity to show off your skills and make a name for yourself. I'm trying to figure out who I think is that the the new doctor or is it someone different? But for people like oh. him who have already made significant contributions to the Xianzhou, they maybe don't need to prove themselves on the war dance stage. <laughs> I like how the, this is the secretary we flirt with. I think um, it might be Jing Yuan's secretary, not the secretary I'm thinking of. Um, if it's Yukong's secretary, then yes. Anyway, so, um, they're essentially being like, this person's overpowered. We don't want them to participate because they would destroy everyone. Also, very curious if we'll get to do the war dance as, like, a, uh, an, an event. Like, uh, like March 7th's event. It has been a while, Mr. Nameless. And you are? Okay, it is the, I thought so. It's the secretary we flirt with. Thank you for your introduction, Mr. Nameless. I'm Shi Kuei, and I work in the Palace of Astrum as the secretary for the Helmmaster. I apologize for interrupting your conversation. I happen to hear you discussing the war dance. And since this person is an old acquaintance, I thought I'd come and say hello. You 
guests with the war damp approaching. Many guests from afar are pouring in. Mr. Pavo here is one of them. He's from the distant planet Kalavara. Mr. Pavo's planet recently joined the Pan Cosmic Trade System. He brought his delegation here this time not only for business, but also to return something that belongs to Xian Zhou. Yes, Shi Kuei. The word gift is perhaps more fitting than return. While it did once belong to the Xianjo, it faced many tribulations to be able to deliver it here, so it should be considered a gift. I apologize for my poor choice of words. Mr. Pavo's delegation brought a legendary Xianjo sword that had been lost for centuries. General Huayan plans to personally thank them at the Palace Astrum and present the sword as a prize to the champion of the war dance. Mr. Pavo and I were actually on our way there. Since you two were talking so enthusiastically about the war dance, maybe you'd be interested in joining us at the Palace of Astrum? What about all the food we've ordered? Okay, pot. Nice to meet you both. The journey to the Sien Jo La Fu wasn't an easy one, but the scenery here is worth it. It's completely different from my homeland. Once the formalities of the Palace of Astrum are finished, I'll find a quiet spot on this street and plant a seedling. And then my mission will be complete. <laughs> the Sword of Heroes will finally be returned to its rightful owners. I couldn't be happier. Wait, 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 wait. Pause. Roll back. Plant a seedling. Tree? Abundance? Denizens of abundance? What about this? This seems suspicious. Oh, you're interested in my home planet? That's great. Your Excellency is welcome to visit us at any time. Why am I an Excellency? Even though the trade route just opened, it still might take around 200 system hour to get there from Clear Point. But our planet is really great. Ah, sure, it's a bit cold, and food is a bit repetitive, and houses aren't as fancy as those on Pier Point, but that doesn't matter. We've discovered massive supernium deposits, and we're on the path to prosperity. I hope we get to visit Pier Point at some point. It sounds like it'd be fun, like if we can go to IPC headquarters. Oh, you mean the Mieka Kivesa? It's an incredible sword. That weapon helped the legendary heroes of my homeland slay demons. And is highly revered. It also has the power to choose monarchs. All the ancient kings of Kalevala received a sign from the sword, showing they were worthy to rule the land. According to tradition, each monarch would plunge the sword into a stone, and only a hero recognized by the sword could pull it out and ascend to the throne next. Arthur? Your people run on King Arthur rules? Well, those are just legends from the past. No one today has witnessed it firsthand. Well, uh, times have changed. And now that we have a council in place, the idea of a sword crowning a king has become a joke. Besides, it wasn't a native of Kalevala who last pulled out the sword and recognized its connection to the Sienjo ship. It was a visitor from afar. I wonder if that means it was Jilu. While the sword holds great historical significance for Kalevala, it doesn't truly belong to our world. The old timers on council had a heated debate about whether to return the sword. They eventually unanimously agreed to let the Mieka Kivesa return to where it truly belongs. Now, if only the British Empire would follow in their steps. That's the best possible outcome. Wonderful. It's an honor to have so many people witness the sword's homecoming. General Huayan will hold the sword gifting ceremony at the Palace of Astrum soon. Are you interested? Hmm? Let's head to the Palace of Astrum together. Hmm? I know. Right? Thanks to March 7th skipping class, we get to join in on the fun. Grandpa always asks me to go look at swords with him. 
He hasn't said anything about this one. It's really weird. Should I now that we're invited? Let's go and check it out. It does not look like we're actually in the building. I want to... Let me click the tele... Meh! I want to click the teleport. Oh well, we'll just have to do this one. It's still early. Where to now? There you are! Come on! Let's go to the ceremony together. Argenti, why are you here Please again? Please allow me to offer a sincere compliment, my fair lady. Your beauty is as pure as a snow-white iris. Sir, why are you in every single event? Where are you going? Where are you? You might as well just join the Astral Express at this point. You are literally in every single scenario. Well, if it isn't my dear friend, glad to meet you again. Uh, who is this weirdo. This is Argenti. Uh, I mean, um, who is this knight? I am Argenti, a member of the Knights of Beauty. I was invited as a part of the Kalevala delegation to escort the legendary Mieka Kivesa back to the Sienjo. May I have the honor of knowing your name? Uh, my name is Yunli. What a beautiful name. I wonder if you have ever heard the holy name of the pure and flawless goddess Adrilla. Oh my gosh, she's definitely giving, um... I literally forgot what they're called. The people who go, like, door to door trying to convince you to convert to their religion. Oh, you're here, Yun Li. <laughs> Didn't expect you to be so well informed. Well, mm, manners and manners. Come on. You won't find another granddaughter as polite and well-behaved as me. He was speaking very slowly, but, well, now that you're here, don't forget your manners, is what I skipped over. <sighs> well, just remember this is a very serious ceremony. Oops. Just lost my headphone. Sorry for keeping you waiting, Mr. Pavo. Now, let the sword-gifting ceremony begin. Before the uh, ceremony officially commences, I want to express my gratitude to the Knight Argenti. Thank you for enlightening us about the sword's origin and for escorting it here safely so that we may complete this ceremony. Oh my gosh. Argenti was the knight, was the King Arthur? I, that makes sense. What are you doing on their planet? On behalf of the Kalevalan delegation, I, Pavel Kalistaya, I'm here to return the legendary Mieka Kifesa to the Sienjo Alliance, its rightful homeland. I'm truly grateful for Kalevala's noble act of returning the sword and for the Knight of Beauty's chivalry. Now, as we gather here on the Sienjo Lafu, I officially welcome the sword back to its homeland. Mieka Kifesa. It's a fitting name for a sword with such a legendary past. Are we going to get to actually see it, or is it going to remain in the Zhongli box? I still remember the name engraved on this sword the day it was forged. Gu Yin. It was forged by Hang Wang, a craftsman from the Zhu Ming's Pyro Jaya Forge. Wait. Uh, uh, Hang Wang? Although its blade is worn and cracked, its essence remains as resilient as the Sienjo Cloud Knights. All it needs is some repairs and polishing by the skilled craftsmen of the Artisanship Commission to regain its former glory. I've decided to entrust this sword, Gu Yin, to the Lawfu Artisanship Commission for restoration. Furthermore, it will serve as the prize for the champion of the Lawfu War Dance. This sword will be wielded against abomination to protect our homeland and live up mission of the Kalevalan delegation that returned it from so far away. Wait. 
wait, I have a prediction. If we do not end this this part in her getting the sword or her, her destroying the sword, because I'm going to guess that it was probably made by her father, um, that will this sword be our weapon for the path of the hunt? Like, are we going to get the path of the hunt in the war dance ceremony? That would be my guess, but I also don't feel like they would give us a whole new path this shortly after giving us the imaginary path. So maybe not. It would be cool, though, if this weapon would be our hunt weapon. Because we don't have a sword yet. We have a spear, we have a hat, and we have a baseball bat. Thank you, General. It is an honor for Kalevala. Now, esteemed knights and delegation members... Please head to the Artisanship Commission, where... No! This sword was forged by Hongwa! Yunli, we can't be interrupting this very serious ceremony. Yunli! These esteemed guests have brought back your father's last work. Where are your manners? Oh, uh, I didn't realize this sword was actually forged by your father. Returning it to its rightful owner is, uh... Grandpa... Give me that cursed sword right now! I'll melt away the remnants of that man's curse once and for all! Um, this is not my, uh... This is not my circus, not my monkeys. Don't be rude, Yunli. Apologize to our esteemed guests from afar. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for making a scene, but I have to melt down this cursed sword. I won't let it fall into anyone else's hands. Yun Lee, please go for now. I assume this might be why she was not informed about this, uh, this ceremony. <laughs> See that Argenti is going to be uh, interfering. <sighs> this is exactly why I didn't want you and Lee to know about this. I didn't want to create trouble, but trouble found its way here anyway. Perhaps it really is divine intervention. Could you please keep an eye on Yun Lee for me? is a tall order, but I'm counting on you. I apologize for the unfortunate interruption. Let us move on with the ceremony. At the fervent plea of Huayen, you temporarily depart from the Palace of Ashram to pursue Yun Li. Unless I'm mistaken, Yun Li should be around here somewhere. Battleship there. Oh, there she is. <laughs> Stop watching me and say something. Did Grandpa send you to look for me? Yep. I bet he did. Just so you know, I'm here just waiting for the perfect moment to snatch that sword. And once I have it, I'll melt it down before anyone can react. Don't even think about stopping me. No one can stop me. Wouldn't it be better for you to win the competition so you can get the sword and melt it down because you will now be the rightful owner of the sword and not do this that can cause a um, political rift. I can't remember the exact word I'm looking for. Grandpa sent you here. <laughs> Shh. 
Surely he doesn't want you to help me. Have you heard of cursed swords? That sword is one. You've clearly heard a lot of folk tales. But that's not the kind of cursed sword I'm talking about. A cursed sword lets anyone, even a complete novice, wield it with insane skill. Just by holding the hilt, even the weakest rookie can brandish it with incredible speed and strength. I'm not joking around. And I'm not making up some crazy story. While a cursed sword grants instant abilities to its wielder, it comes at a cost. It's like continuously adding fuel to the forge. With each swing, the sword drains the wielder's blood and essence. Day by day, the fuel will run out, leaving nothing but an empty husk. Okay, but obviously, if Hui En knows this, he would need to tell people about it, or at least warn the person who wins the competition about it, because I don't imagine it would look good for the Sienjo to give a sword that literally drains people of its energy out as a gift without warning them. Soon enough, it will no longer be a person wielding a sword, but a mindless, killing machine consumed by bloodlust and murderous thoughts. Oh, so you're familiar with Heliogai? That makes this much easier to explain. There was a lunatic swordsmith who infused metal blades with Heliobi as he was obsessed with turning weapons into living things. And this is how cursed swords were made. I know, I shouldn't have caused a scene at the sword gifting ceremony. I thought this through. If I don't make a fuss now, that cursed sword will cause a whole lot more trouble. So it's better if it's me causing the trouble. I mean, if a helio buy is sealed in it, we just have to have the Ten Lords Commission that deals with helio buy come by and like purify it, and then it's fine. By the way, aren't they supposed to be taking the sword to the Artisanship Commission for repairs? Why haven't they come out yet? Any ideas? <sighs> Looks like they're not going to show up here. I'll just head straight to the Artisanship Commission. It doesn't matter why Grandpa chose that sword. I won't let it fall into anyone else's hands. I'll track down every single sword he forged and melt them down one after another. Just like I've been doing all these years. I have to go now. Is she planning to sneak into the Artisanship Commission and steal that sword? The joy of having teleports all over this. The Artisanship Commission is so big. Where could she be? Just a while ago, a girl came up to me, all fierce and demanding directions. She said she's a member of the Artisanship Commission. Do you know her? No idea who she is. If she really works here, how can she not know her way around? Oh, I see. That explains it then. It explains what? It explains nothing at all. She said something like, I'm a member of the Artisanship Commission. Where do you keep your precious stuff? I got scared and pointed her toward Master Gongshu's warehouse, where he stores his aromatons. Wait, why did you give her directions? What if she was planning to steal something? Where else? Like I said, she was headed straight for the warehouse, where all the valuable arumatons are. Yeah, that place is filled with Master Gongshu's precious arumatons. I bet they'll give her a hard time. I guess it's just not gonna let me. Oh, what is this? The 
me finding something that I apparently did not do. Uh, what are you doing here? Look, if I get into trouble, it's my problem. I don't want to drag you into it. Fine. But smash these metal cans first. Then we can talk. Don't get <laughs> Let's improvise. It's on me. Commencing pacification. <laughs> Gear is thunder. Watch your head. do come true. <laughs> Conflict is pitiless. <laughs> All in. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Watch your head. No mercy. Incident. That might be what I was looking for earlier. <laughs> Let's improvise. Let the show begin. Ah, uh, bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Watch your head. Conflict is pitiless. Man, this is taking a minute, huh? <laughs> Let's improvise. Let the show begin. Ah. Lower your weapons. <laughs> Criminal. Watch your head. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. the last of them thank you for helping me out this place is heavily guarded but there's nothing but arumatons where is the arsenal <laughs> seems like not even those craftsmen know where the arsenal is at this rate we won't find anything and grandpa might take me away before i can do anything <laughs> you're not really here to help me you're here to stop me, right? <laughs> you have a kind soul, but if you want to stop me, you'll have to prove yourself. You probably think I'm being impulsive and unreasonable, right? <laughs> hey, I'm not always like this. It's all because of that cursed sword. <laughs> Look, I owe you an explanation, but this 
isn't the best place to talk. We need to find somewhere else. Are maybe clear, though? I'm still pretty riled up. Uh, this? <laughs> this is just a temporary break. I already told you about Guyan. The sword that was returned during the ceremony. It's a cursed sword, with a heliobus inside. And Hong Guang, the swordsmith who forged it, is my father. I rarely mention his name to anyone other than Grandpa. Maybe, like you said, I've been avoiding having to talk about him. But as long as my mission to hunt down cursed swords continues, it's impossible to avoid the topic forever. For some reason, I feel like I can open up to you. Honestly, I don't remember much about him. All I know is that the Pyrogyre Forge used to be a bustling place, with people from all over coming to get one of his swords. We called him the greatest master craftsman since Yingsheng. Which is Blade, for any of you who have forgotten. I didn't catch all the details. I do remember seeing him forge those amazing swords while the visitors watched with smiles on their faces. I used to believe that craftsmen brought happiness to others. The swords crafted by the Pyrogyre Forge are famed across the stars. They possess exceptional sharpness and invincibility. With these legendary weapons, even ordinary people can become skilled warriors, capable of overcoming the most formidable opponents. But then, he became obsessed with becoming a famed swordsmith and started crossing all sorts of lines. He forged cursed swords that should never exist. And all those people who desired those twisted swords started flooding into the palace. However, just like Grandpa said, those who excel with the sword will eventually suffer by it. The palace was overrun with visitors from afar. Some left empty-handed. Others got swords that didn't fulfill their desires. And some even resorted to stealing. And in the midst of all the chaos my father created, he ended up being stabbed by one of the swords he forged. It was so sudden and unexpected everything went silent for a moment all I could hear was the sound of bones breaking and blood pouring out I was frozen in place unable to move it was only when my mother pushed me away from the deadly swing of the cursed sword that I managed to escape. I don't remember much after that, except for the pounding of my heart and the sound of my own gasps of breath. I could hear the smiths in the pyrogyre forge shouting, Run away, Yunli. And the screams of agony, my tears wouldn't stop. And I couldn't see anything. I kept gasping for air until I collapsed in a pool of blood. If General Huayan hadn't arrived in time, I probably wouldn't be here talking to you now. After that, 
General Huayan took me in and treated me like his own granddaughter. To me, he is a hundred times better than my sinful father. He taught me forging and swordsmanship. I mean, if uh, if this is like any other um, stereotypical plot line, is that uh, Ho General Huayan is not as innocent of the crimes as she's being led to believe, because usually, unless some outside influence is occurring, um, a person doesn't turn on a dime to make really nice, pristine, sacred swords to corrupted powerful swords um, especially if the entirety of the fire forge uh, descended into madness like that um, it sounds like an outside influence was definitely occurring and or the law fu not the law fu the Xianzhou Zhu Ming I believe the Zhu Ming was like telling them they were needing to make swords for battle or something Hang Guang paid for his sins, but his troubled legacy must not go unchecked. According to the records, he forged a total of 1,382 Heliobus cursed swords, and 182 of them had unique designs. When I joined the Pyrogyre Forge for training, I made a vow to hunt down all those cursed swords. So far, I found 312 of them, and Gu Yun will be my 313th. Like all the other cursed swords, I'll separate it from the Heliobus. Then, I'll melt it down and make it part of the Blade of Forged Remnants. I've said my piece now. Even though it'll be tough for Grandpa, I still have to melt down the sword. Those travelers who came seeking Hong Wong's swords all came in the name of justice and honor. Most of those so-called great heroes were heartless killers. They are only called heroes because they won. Many of the cursed swords I've destroyed had honorable and grand names, too. A legendary sword and a butcher's knife are often just different ways of describing the same thing. Hmm. Somehow, after talking to you, I, I feel like I've cooled off a bit. Well, I'll have an honest conversation with Grandpa tomorrow. And... And I won't take any action against Gu Yun. Until he gives me his reasons. Huh. Yeah. I shouldn't have done that in a public place. Anyway, thank you. We'll catch up tomorrow. I should go back to the Palace of Astrum. And to tell General Hui Yan what happened at the Artisanship Commission. As long as she's not lying and she's gonna secretly try to steal it after she sent you away so that you won't get in trouble. My granddaughter didn't cause any trouble, did she, young man? You explain what happened in detail, and Hwayan's nervous expression eases a little. Sorry for all this trouble. Yun Li told you quite a bit. Now it's time for this old man to tell my side of the story. Uh, Han Guang was my beloved disciple. A rare genius not seen in the Pyro Jaya Forge since Yun Xing. However, talent can sometimes be a curse. He had an unusual fervor for forging, and he dreamed of forging a sword with self-awareness that surpassed that of humans. He believed it would make warriors invincible without any training. According to him, 
While weapons of mass destruction like Zhu Ming flames and alchemical arrows can destroy many enemies, true victory lies with soldiers who fearlessly fight, ready to lay their lives on the line. Usually, Xianzhou swordsmiths infuse a basic level of awareness into their swords to make them easier to wield. But even then, soldiers need to experience countless battles to overcome fear and sharpen their instincts. So... <sighs> By infusing Helio Bai into swords, they managed to forge weapons that could grant their wielders strength and valor, and even make decisions for them. However, weapons are different from regular tools. They are meant to kill, plain and simple. After countless battles, all the anger, fear, and bloodlust are soaked up by the Heliobi within the swords. The soldiers wielding them not only gain strength, they also become consumed by the malice, turning them into puppets possessed by the swords. No matter how noble Hong Wan's intentions were, those weapons, soaked in blood, turned into cursed swords eventually. Later, Outworlders got wind of what he was doing and encouraged him to keep forging cursed swords. They came up with all sorts of reasons for taking back their kingdoms, slaying demons. And you know what happened next. That massacre took our parents' lives, and the lives of many craftsmen in the Pyrogyre Forge. Yun Li managed to survive, but she couldn't escape the horrors of that day. Okay, I'm actually surprised that they just went all in on the, the her dad was went and obtained this power. Yes. I don't want her to spend her whole life trapped under her father's shadow. She doesn't deserve to carry the weight of his mistakes. Despite her vow to hunt down and wipe out all cursed swords, fulfilling that vow requires immense effort. Traversing the starry seas in search of the swords is like finding a needle in a haystack. And to reclaim those swords, she has to duel the bloodthirsty wielders, teetering on the edge of life and death. She has taken back over 300 cursed swords and has suffered the same number of fatal wounds. I took her in to give her a chance at a normal childhood, not to send her on a sword-hunting journey. Even if she manages to melt down all the cursed swords one day, what will she do with her life after? Zhu Yin is indeed one of the cursed swords forged by Han Guang. Very few swordsmiths could use Helio Bai as forging material, and Han Guang was one of them. His attempt came at a terrible cost. I thought this sword could be an opportunity. I wanted to tell her that her father wasn't all evil, that even the man she resents so much managed to forge a true sword of heroes. I also wanted to find a chance to tell her about the history and origin of this sword, but not during the ceremony. As you saw, it wasn't a good time. I've instructed the Artisanship Commission to keep the sword safe in the arsenal. If you have any doubts, feel free to ask the people involved. Mr. Gongshu, there's something I want to talk to you about. General Huayan gave the loss of the Star Cell to Yu Yun. Don't you worry. General Huayan has already conferred his instructions. Right, I heard from my apprentice that a young lady 
with a sort of barbs since they are sent to this room. That's General Huayan's da- granddaughter, right? Is she here to chat or kidnap me? She's already promised me that she wouldn't take Guillen until we've confirmed the situation. What? She's coming to steal the sword? My nerves can't take much more of this. The Knights of Beauty just escorted the sword to the Artisan Commission. It is currently in the armory without a chance for compromise or mishaps. You just relax. When I have time, I want to hear a girl tell me why she tried to steal the blade. Since my granddaughter mentioned talking to me tomorrow, I'll be waiting for her. By the way, you watched over her for quite some time. You must be exhausted, aren't you? <laughs> I'll be counting on you then. Time to go back and find that class skipping March 7th. After finishing it all, you returned to the Express and came face to face with March 7th, caught skipping class. Uh, Dahao. Dahao? You there, Kalis? Are you able to cooperate with us for a bit? Care to come by the Artisan Commission? Something happened to the sword? Whoa, I didn't even say anything. How'd you know? That's correct. The Artisan Commission said that yesterday a sor- uh, they received a sword yesterday from General Huayan. Today, we checked. The sword has vanished. Anyway, the Realm Keeping Commission is officially conducting an inter- investigation and, and in- interrogating the relevant individuals. I even told Master Gongshu yesterday to keep careful watch on the sword. Does he know about the current situation? Yeah, he reported it. Anyway, anyone who attended yesterday's ceremony and lacks a clear alibi will be considered a suspect. The craftsman also mentioned a young girl who broke into the Artisan Commission with a sword in hand. She bears a bulk of the suspicion. Alright, enough chatter. I'll see you at the Artisan Commission. I did think it was like a little short for the usual... Uh... These things... Let me put myself on full screen so that you can get out of it. Let me get the full screen. Give me one second. Okay, there we go. Has my screen just straight up been frozen for a while? Then I did not know. Just know, if I know. No, okay, it was just frozen a second on my page. All right, so I believe these things are usually like at least two hours long so i imagine that is a good stopping point if we just want to go for an hour today uh and considering that last time i was playing for like two to three hours i feel like that is good enough for me today um this is taking a much different turn than i was expecting i will say that um for this companion mission uh and it does look like you probably should get this one done prior to uh, the war dance ceremony to see what happens to the sword, like, narratively. Um, so, yeah. We will... Oh, my boy. Delighted in him. Anyway, um, so that is all for me today. Thank you all so much for popping by. Uh, let's see. Do we have enough for a temple? Not quite. Uh, and we are starting to build up some coins uh, for when Kafka has her run. And so, which is this week, tomorrow even. Um, 
So uh, make sure everybody is ready for our first five star triple banner. Um, or is it quadruple? Because it's the new person, Kafka, Robin, and Black Swan. It's a quadruple five star banner. So everybody get ready for that. Um, hopefully we'll pull a Moza. That's my big, uh, my big want is I want to pull the new four star. Uh, if we happen to get a Kafka Edelon, um, I would not be against it because Mother is gorgeous. So I would not mind uh, pulling an Edelon on her. Um, but yeah, so I hope you all have a great rest of your week and I hope you all get some great sleep. The weather, at least here, is starting to cool down and so my sleep must will probably hopefully be a lot better. Hmm. So goodbye everyone.